Hi everyone, my name is Janine Mann and I'm actually the VET coordinator here at Axial Training. Firstly, I'd like to welcome you to your barista course that you're going to be conducting with us um, through Kelvin Grove State College uh, for the next couple of weeks. So at the moment, the requirements for you to be looking at um, is obviously to get some of your theory uh, completed prior to your training day or practical training day, which will be held at your school uh, in week 10 which will be given to you in the near future. So you've got the dates organised before you, um, for when you're actually required to complete the, the practical training. So at the moment, I'm going to run you through Lime Room. Um, you all should have access to that now. And if any of you don't, please feel free to email me and I can set you up with a new password uh, or log on. Um, but you should be given that by now. So you'll have like an AX number and then you'll have your password, which is a generic password that's been ordered for you. You can obviously change that and you more than likely will be prompted to do that when you first log on into Lime Room. OK, so I'm just going to share with you now the screen for Lime Room so you can see exactly what I'm doing as we go through. Um, and that way you will be able to um, follow along or use this video to go back for your reference. Just remember, though, we are always here um, to help you with anything that you have. So if you want to email me, um, I'll set that also with the video so you can see my email address at the end. Um, feel free to email me. Contact Emma at your school um, and she'll be able to help you also. And then obviously we can communicate with each other. But don't ever feel as though it's too hard. If it's getting too much for you or you don't think you're going to get the um, theoretical stuff done prior to actual classes, just let us know and we can take each case as it comes along. It's not too hard for you. Um, it shouldn't take you too long to complete the units. Um, but once again, as I said, everyone's circumstances are different, so please feel free to let me know. OK, I'm just going to share the screen with you now so you can have a look exactly what you're seeing. So this should be the screen that you're looking at now at the moment. So you should have a tile here that says a Cert 3 in hospitality. And then obviously you also have what we call a student common room. Student common rooms are obviously there for you to use if you wish to, um, but most people um, probably don't use it too often. Um, but because there's quite a few of you all from Kelvin Grove, feel free if you want to to use that and you can ask each other questions and things from there also. So what we're going to have a look at now is the Cert 3 in Hospitality tile. So if you click on that tile, you should be taken automatically into what we call our introduction into hospitality. So because you um, are enrolled in a Cert 3 in Hospitality for you to receive your QCE points, so this is obviously getting you the um, the two extra points on your QCE. So this is why you're under the Cert 3 in Hospitality. Um, so it's like a partial like a partial units that you're doing in that qualification. So as you can see on the left hand side here, you'll see the course introduction. You've got your Lime Room study guide. You've got the e-library. And then as you can see down here, you've got your four units that you'll actually be completing whilst you're doing your course. The first unit we really want to look at is this unit called Use Hygienic Practices for Food Safety. Now, the reason I say to do this one first is because without this unit, we can't really deem you competent in any of the other units that are on here. OK, so we really need to be looking at this unit first. So I'm going to use that one to use um, for you to be able to see, and then we can obviously go on from there. So click on the Use Hygienic Practices link, and this will take you through for just this unit in particular. So as you can see here, it gives you a little bit of an explanation in regards to what Use Hygienic Practices is actually talking about and what we're going to be learning. OK, and then as you can see here, we have a box that says our support documents. OK, now also on there, you'll be able to see that the rest of the assessments here have a locked key, uh, padlock on there. OK, now these will stay locked until you've completed something here in the support documents, which I will show you a bit further on. So please don't look at it and go, oh, I can't get into anything because all mine have locked. They will be locked until we come across into this support document area. OK, so once we've got into the support documents, that's where you're going to find your information for what you're needing to do in the course. OK, so this is where you're going to find all your answers. Um, you're going to have opportunities there to do some little pre quizzes so you can get yourself familiar with what's going to happen in the next lot of the assessments. And obviously you can move on from there. So I'm just going to show you now the support documents. You do need to remember for your support documents that you need to allow pop ups. 
So if for some reason it's not allowing you to have the pop ups, you will see at the very top here, there's a small little star. Uh, sorry, this little folder here. There'll be a little link up the top here and it will highlight and it will say to allow pop ups. You need to make sure you're allowing pop up pop ups because that's what all of our um, to all, all our documents are are linked as. So obviously here, click on FSA 001 support documents. And it will take you through into the support document itself. Now I'm just going to pop back here because I don't believe you'll be able to see this screen now straight away. So just bear with me a minute. I'm just going to make sure you can see that. OK, so I'm just going to share the screen again with you. Let me just double check where we are. OK, so here we are here. So you should now be able to see the support documents. Um, so you can see here we've got an introduction, we've got safety issues, we're talking about results of poor hygiene food practices and safety practices. And as you can see, as you go down the page, each tile will represent what that actual um, information is going to be about. So if you get stuck doing your assessment or you get stuck doing your quiz, you can always come back to the support documents, try and find the tile, obviously, that the question relates to. OK, and then once you've got that tile, you can reread what you need to do and then obviously go back on and continue with your questions. OK, so as you can see there, there's quite a little bit there. There's a little bit down the bottom now about COVID-19. So that's only new that's come into uh, food safety. So obviously with the pandemic and stuff that happened in 2020, um, this has now come on board for us to start to keep that into um, in mind also. So if you go back up to the very top again, and then obviously you can see here that we have what we call a checkpoint. So here it is here, it says checkpoint number one. What a checkpoint actually is, is it goes through and it makes sure that you've understood all these tiles that you've read so far. OK, so if we jump on and have a look at one of these checkpoints. You will see here it's asking you to place a tick next to each of the four parts of the food safety code. So once you've read the food safety code and you've read the tiles, you should be able to go on now and be able to answer these questions quite easily. So say, for example, we decide, OK, we think that it's going to be in the general food standards. We think it's going to be about food product standards. We might also say it might be about the food safety standards and then we're left with one and we're not quite sure which one it is. You might look at it and go, is it the general production standards or is it the primary production standards? And you might go, oh, look, I'm going to go primary and see if that's correct. Once you've completed the four ticks, as you can see, they've all now been placed in the box. Up the top right hand corner here, you will see, sorry, down the bottom here, you will see there's a confirm button. So once you hit the confirm button, you will then go through and it will tell you whether you've got it right or whether you've got it wrong. OK, so once you've done that, you'll hit next and then it will come on and it will give you the next question. The next question says, what does the EHO stand for? We'll have a look at it and we go, OK, we believe it's the Environmental Health Officer. So we click on there and we say confirm and it says give yourself an applause. You're now out of here. So we've now completed that first checkpoint. OK, so once you've completed that first checkpoint, I just want to quickly take you back now and show you something that we were looking at before. So if you just close out of the support documents there themselves, I'm just going to go back and we're going to share the other screen that we had before with you. So we're going to go back into here. OK, now, as you can see, I've now got a tick in my support documents. So I've got a green tick here. And as you can see now, I don't have a lock symbol on anything else. So that means to tell me I can now go on and complete the other assessments that are in here now that I've completed that one checkpoint. OK, so it's mandatory for you to do that. Otherwise, these will stay locked and you will not have access to them. OK, assessment one, which is this one here, is just a quiz. So it's multiple choice. You'll go through. There'll be some drop down boxes, some true and false, those type of things, and you might need to match some symbols and that kind of thing. But you do need to get 100% in that activity. So once you've completed that and you've got 100%, it will come back and tell you. If you have not got 100%, that's fine. Try again. It'll show you the ones that you've got correct and it will also show you the ones that you've got wrong. So all you will do is go back and get, do the ones that you've got wrong. So you'll go back and it might jump. So it might go question five, then it might go to question 25, and then it might go to question 30. And that's fine. It'll just depend on which ones you've got and you'll fill in the ones that you've finished. So you can keep trying at that until you've got 100%. Now you'll probably set at five goes 
for that. So after five goes, it'll probably lock you out and say you don't have enough opportunities anymore. Because we like to think that you're not just guessing, you need to actually read the support documents. And most majority of the stuff is quite common. It's stuff that you probably hear on TV, um, especially for this unit anyhow. It might be stuff if you're working part-time in a, you know, a food takeaway store or something like that that you're familiar with, um, or even just your basic stuff that you use at home, okay? So once you've completed assessment one and you've got 100%, we will be notified of that. So then we can um, allocate it to your um, vet track file, okay? The next thing you need to do is your short answer questions. So this is obviously very similar. It'll be a, a Word document that you can download and work on offline if you need to. Or once you download it, you can then open it up and have your support documents open and be answering your assessment as you go along so that you can remember and make sure you're getting the right information that's in there. Once you've completed the short assessments or the short answer questions, okay, I'll just take you through and we can have a look at where you're going to upload there. All right. Just bear with me a second. You should be able to see this screen. So you'll come in here and it will say short answer questions. You will download that. You can see it's just a Word document, okay, and then you'll be able to fill it in offline. Once you're down there and you're ready to submit it, you've now saved it as a Word document. You can come over here where it says add submission. All right, so once you've got add submission and you scroll down a little bit further here, you will see here that you need to drag your file in. So obviously you can click over here to the files, find the file that belongs to that assessment and drop it here into this box. Once you've done that, you will then go on and save changes. Okay, you'll be then taken to this screen. Okay, oh, I've got nothing in there submitted. So let me just drag something in there so that we can have a look. Uh, of course, there's nothing in there. Let me just go in here. Okay, so I've now got a file in there, as you can see. So then I'll go in here and say save changes. So once you've clicked on the save changes section here, when you go down to the bottom of the page, it says here, that we need to either edit the submission, remove the submission, or submit the, assist, the assignment, okay? So once you agree that, yes, you've got everything on there, remember to put your name and stuff on the front cover sheet and all that kind of thing when you download the assessment. So just like you would normally do for an assessment at school, click on the submit assessment. Once you go there, it will ask you for one more piece of evidence, okay? So it comes down here and it says, make sure to confirm your submission. It says, this assignment is my own work except where I have acknowledged the use of the work or of other people. Once you've done that, you need to put a tick in this box. It's really important that we put a tick in this box because if we don't and you submit the unit or the assessment, it comes through as a draft and we can't actually mark it for you. Okay, so you do need to make sure you've ticked that box and then you can click continue and we will get allocated into our hospitality faculty. We'll be advised that there's an assessment there waiting to be marked. OK, we will then turn around and do the marking for you. We usually say between 24 to 48 hours in regards to marking. Um, it may take longer depending on that workload of our current trainers. And if that's the case, um, please feel free to email me and I can always have a look at it if you're needing something back in a hurry. OK, you will then obviously receive feedback. So now that feedback can either be, yes, you've got everything right. Congratulations. That's that unit completed for you or you just need to fix up these couple of questions and we'll give you an update um, in regards to what needs to be changed or where you can find the information or whether you're on the right page, but you just need to add a bit more in or something like that. So we'll always give you feedback in regards to what you actually need to resubmit. Okay, so it won't be just a one-off thing. Um, you'll actually be given some feedback so that you can go in and make yourself competent in that unit. OK, so once you've completed that and you've done your assessment too, that's all you need to complete um, for this actual unit. OK, so every unit that you have got on your dashboard, you only need to complete the assessment one, the quiz and assessment two, the short answer questions. The practicals, which are down the bottom here, so assessment three, practical observations, these are what we do on the day that we are with you at your school doing your practicals over those two days. Okay, so just be aware, assessment one, the quiz here, 
and assessment two short answer questions. That is all you need to complete. Any practical component or practical observations or anything that states that it's practically done, you leave and that's what we complete when we come and do it with you in your training session. OK, so once you've done those, you can look at that unit and go, OK, I've completed that unit. You'll get a tick here once it's completed. And as you can see here, once you've done the quiz, you'll get a green tick there. Once you've submitted this and we've deemed it satisfactory, you'll get a green tick in here also. So once you can see that you've got the ticks on either of these sides, you can pretty much know that, OK, you've now completed that unit and you're set ready to go. All right. So then you can go on and complete your other units that are here for you. So you've got obviously your responsible service of alcohol, your prepare and service espresso coffees, your use hygienic practices for food safety and you'll participate in safe food handling practices. OK, so lots of people have asked me over the last couple of days, what are we actually going to get out of this course? Like what are the options that we can do? So the reason we've put this short course together for you is to give you some job skills, give you something that you can go and use, obviously, in industry, in the hospitality industry, if you decide that's what you're really wanting to go and do or to get some part time work even in the school holidays. So the unit FSA 001, so these use hygienic practices for food safety and FSA 002 participate in safe food handling practices. These two units here become your food safety certificate. OK, so anybody working in hospitality at the moment that deals with food must hold this certificate. OK, so that's these two units here together. The next unit we have, obviously, is your RSA. So provide responsible service of alcohol. So any cafe, any restaurant, any, um, you know, hotel or pub or club that you want to work in. Anywhere that sells alcohol, you must also once again hold your responsible service of alcohol or your RSA certificate is what it's usually known as. OK, so this is what this one here will be for. OK, the last unit obviously you've got is your prepare and serve espresso coffee. So lots of people say, well, this make me a barista. It will give you the basics to being a barista. OK, so baristas don't just go to a course and then become the best coffee makers that are in a cafe, okay? They go through a lot of experience and a lot of training and a lot of daily, you know, making coffees daily after all the time that actually gives them more opportunities to better themselves and it's the same as what you guys will do. So this will give you a basic understanding of coffee. You'll learn some basic latte art. So you'll get to do maybe like a little rosette or something or maybe a fan or something on the top of the milk, um, but it will give you an understanding of how coffees are made, the importance of how coffee is poured um, and obviously the use of coffee beans and stuff like that. So it's a lot of background information um, for you to get the perfect coffee. So that's what you will learn in this unit here. OK, so you all together, you'll be quite prepared and equipped to be able to go and work in hospitality, um, to have a, a job either in front of house. So, you know, looking after the cafes, uh, the, the customers at the front or also working in the back of house, so doing the cooking or the um, the meal prep or something like that um, in cafes, clubs, restaurants, that type of thing um, to your choice. OK, so hopefully this will give you a little indication of what Lime Room is. Um, hopefully you'll be able to navigate your way through there quite easily. Uh, as I said, once again, feel free to always contact me if there are any problems. I can always do a team session with you or we can always organise to do a phone chat or something like that um, to help you through Lime Room. But as I said, please don't make it to be too hard for yourselves. It is meant to be enjoyable and give you some skills for you to use in life. So don't make it too hard for yourselves. Um, feel free to um, ask your friends questions also so feel free to get them to you know give you some ideas or work together in a team or something like that is more than welcome to do that um, and as I said we will then get you to uh, get you organized so that you can then obviously have these skills to use later in life and hopefully develop a passion for hospitality so once again thank you very much um, my name is Janine Feel free to contact me through um, email. So my email address is Janine. It's J-A-N-E-N-E -E dot Marn, M-A-H-O-N, at Axial, A-X-I-A-L dot E-D-U dot A-U. OK, so that's my email address. If you're not sure, you haven't had a chance to take it down, you can listen to this inter uh, the Zoom session again. Um, but other than that, good luck. And um, I'm sure I will see you somewhere on the other side when you're doing your practical units. Well done, everybody, and thank you very much. See you later.